No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Okay. No, you you think you are. You are. But you got a knife in my face, and you're my father. Right. I feel like this my last breath, so I'm gonna speak how I feel you're before I leave. Dumb shit. I feel, man, I'm stupid. Bro, I'm gonna go, bro. I'm not even gonna exactly. lie. Exactly. Can I please? Exactly. And That's I still want. wanna go to work, and I still want. wanna take my life. Jamie, you went to my job. That's fine. We both gonna be fucked up. You got two months. We live in this house. You got two months. We both gonna See, be fucked up. See, you just stupid bitch. Cause I can stab your whole ass. Cause you the stupid motherfucker. And you think I'm a bitch. You think I'm a whole ass nigga. You think I ain't your daddy. You think I ain't crazy. Bitch. That's your problem. You hit me, I gotta go, I and I ain't you. going to work, because you, you hate me, me. Right. I hate you. go now, so I can go to work, no bitch, I kill you ho, that's your stupid ass excuse, and you wish, I wish I could, I wish I could, and that's the problem, you can't, and he ain't, until I let you go. So none of y'all fuckers love me. All these niggas in this house and none of y'all give a fuck about me. That's cool. Bro, you You would never get me back, man. I swear. <laughs> you would never get me fucking back, bro. Look what you did to me, the fuck. Because I'm trying to tell you about your fucked up ways and how you treat us. I can't tell you. And I'm supposed to think that you're the only one here to protect me. And I got a fucking knife to... <laughs> I love myself, and I love you too. That's what you taught me. You you taught me to grow up and love myself and love my parents too, and that's what I've been doing. And I try, but you gotta understand, you got your own generational trauma that I had nothing to do with. But once once you hear it, you don't block about so many memories in your life. Once you hear it. You being good for yourself. I just wanted you to understand me. I never wanted to all of you. You don't. You don't. Because if you did, you would have never been in it. You don't know what you're talking about. If you did, all of this would have never happened by myself. That's what you say, then. It's about kissing your ass. Look at my brand new hairstyle. You got everything under control. That I just got done. All of this it don't matter. If it don't matter, it won't matter. It's all going to be destroyed, so fuck it. It's okay. There you go. I love you. I accept that, but that ain't all on me. I love you. It'll always be that. It, it never changed. It never changed. Okay. My husband gave up on me, and we are right now at the courthouse where I pulled up on him 
at the courthouse because he want to divorce me. Right? You going to give up? That easy? You don't know, but you up here. Did you fill out the paper? It's like I'm, I'm, it's like I'm on the edge, like. Did you fill out the paper? Can I, can I talk for once? Like, it's like I've been going through so much, like it's, it's, I'm debating, like, should I go with it or should I not? Like, I don't. We're debating you up here at the courthouse. This, it looked like you made your decision. I'm just like, why, why are you here? I'm trying to see if you, you really gonna go through with me. Why are you next to me? Cause it's like, I'm, I'm trying to, free, I'm trying to, I'm thinking like. You text me, told me you was getting a divorce, you at the courthouse. I pulled up on you obviously to stop this from happening. So are you leaving with me or are you staying here? be doing this, I could, I'm thinking like, this, this woman, you know, I, should I divorce her or should I stay with her and, you know, just try to work it out, but it seems like you ain't trying to, like, get your stuff together, because, like, I, I done told you, I done told you plenty, I done told you plenty of time. Don't make me get, come on, don't make me get arrested, don't make me get crazy up here. I done told you plenty of time, like. I work, I work, and like come home, I slave, and it's like you don't. Man, get crazy, it's for real. But it's like for real, for real. Let's go now. So let's go. Come on, why are you doing that? Why are you do that? Just let's go. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, and verse 26. If she go, not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh, and give her a bill of divorce, and let her go. All right, and that's what's coming to a lot of these, you know what I'm saying, Keisha's and Eva's. All right, wait, all right. You finna get that bill of divorce and get your ass let go. All right, before I continue, let me start out by giving all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rug Kakwadash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who teach in the course where I learn this truth. Peace and salutation to the Lord's elect. All right, finna get into this late evening lesson, Lord willing to be edifying. All right, uh, I showed you the clips up to this point, so you can pretty much see what it's finna be about. All right, another one of those, all right, dealing with the Eva. And Keisha Demon, all right. And um, you know, we'll start right here at the end. All right, the last clip in particular you just seen, all right, with um the Jake woman, so called Negro woman, trying to keep her contract with her husband, all right, because that's all that is that marriage license shit, that ain't nothing but a contract, all right. You know, and um, you know, it, it seems like Jake is at his wits end with the with the demon, all right. He don't want to deal with the witch no more. Let me refer, refer to them as witches, not demons, all right? You know, so he's pretty much at his wits end with her, all right? You know, he didn't told her pretty much that he don't want to, he don't want to deal with her no more, all right? Uh, <laughs> she can't handle rejection, which a lot of these women can't, you know, but, you know, the times we coming into known as Jacob's Trouble, this being the hopeful year of Jacob's Trouble, all right? A lot of you women are going to be cut off from the men that you're with now, either by them leaving you or by the Lord taking them away from you in another way, all right? Because the scriptures speak about in, um, what is the second Ezra 16, about the virgins mourning having no husbands. All right, second Ezra 16 in verse 33, it says, The virgins shall mourn having no, bri no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. And their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. All right. A lot of these men over here, and I use the word men loosely. All right. You know, they're men as far as their geni gen genitalia goes, but it's, you know. Anyway, a lot of them men going to get drafted and they're going to get called off to go fight in uh, 
this third is coming this third coming whoa all right world war three all right and then also a lot of them gonna get you know gunned down in these streets in the time we're coming into man let me try to do that all right y'all forgive me but yeah they're gonna get called off to go fight in that third man that third world's war esau's you know what i'm saying final war that he's gonna uh that's gonna be the war that takes this takes him out of rulership all right esau being the so-called white man which is not white he's red all right, but you know, yeah, a lot of these Jakes over here, you know, they're going to get called to go over there and fight in their war. All right, a lot of them going to get caught up in the seditions of men. All right, the civil unrest that's coming to this place. All right, and your women going to be left out here without a covering. All right, and here's where it says it. Second Ezra 16 and 34, in the wars. All right, that's plural, meaning more than one. All right, class wars, race wars, race wars. All right, and um, the ultimate third war all right world war three in the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine all right the lord gonna you know when the um shortage of food comes the lord gonna starve a lot of these men and these women out all right then you're gonna have esau rolling rolling on them and shit too all right it's, it's gonna be a deadly time out here all right and the lord is already bringing the division now all right you know he's already setting these households apart all right you know so that woman, all right, hey, at least she's trying to, you know, uh, you know, fight for what she she thinks is her salvation, all right. Because at the end of the day, a man is gonna be the salvation of a woman. That particular man, I doubt it, but at least she is trying, you know, to reconcile herself back to the man. But maybe she went too far, all right. The scripture do speak about, you know, if a man and a wife disagree and they're apart, you know, let them they can re be reconciled back together. But that time apart, she's not to be with any other men. All right, and I, I don't know the intricate today relationship of why they're going through what they're going through, but you know clearly, dude is at his wits' end with the woman, and he ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, string it out no longer. All right, and I don't blame him. All right, you seen that woman? All right, shit, man, Big Shirley with the blonde hair. All right, you know she's unruly. All right, you know she's contentious. All right, the way she was grabbing on dudes, she was like, "Get up, come on, before I go to jail." All right, you know what I'm saying? And Jake all fucking, you know what I'm saying, to himself and shit, which is cool, but you can tell who was uh who was who was running that shit, you know what I'm saying? She she gonna she gonna uh make that dude have an early grave, all right? You know, stressing him out. Scripture tell you um a a, a woman uh let me see, sir, right? a woman uh calm her husband's heart, you know, not do that to him, let me see. All right, this Ecclesiastes 26 and 1, blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be doubled. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. All right, dude, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know that right there, all right? And, you know, us being in this captivity, all right, us being the so-called Negro, the Spanish, Native Americans, the Israelites, according to the Bible, all right, you know, this is one of the curses that we're under right now, you know what I'm saying? A woman being unruly being difficult contentious angry all right you know haughty wanton you know all of them things these these witches over here in body it's a punishment to us you know because we was like that to the lord spiritually so for us being spiritual adulterous whores the lord gave us unruly adulterous whores all right you know and then we understand it now all right so then uh what else i have in that thing all right then we had the second clip all right, well, before I go to the second clip, I did with the first one. You had the first clip, all right, when you had the mother, you know what I'm saying, teaching her daughter, you know what I'm saying, how to twerk and put her hands on the wall, and she was seeing what she was doing, all right? And that's what you get over here, all right? A bunch of destroyed, loose, unattended women, all right? This is Ezekiel 16, and what is it, 44? Behold, everyone that used it, that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. All right, and you see it. All right, the scripture tell you the aged woman was supposed to teach the young woman, you know what I'm saying, how to love their children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary, speak reproachfully. All right, but you see what the aged woman is. All right, over here in this captivity, all right, the aged woman is out of order. All right, I know women that's 60, 70 plus years old with blind wigs on. All right, you know, we, we ain't even got to go all the way down that rabbit hole because we, we know what time it is, all right? 
And you Jakes, you you, you Negro Spanish Native Americans, you finna find out what time it is for this loose, reckless behavior that, you know, governs your day-to-day -day life. All right, the Lord is getting ready to kill you niggas. All right. This 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 is the deadliest time. Man, bro, we can't even talk it up. All right. We're in the time of the Passover right now. It goes out tonight, but then we got that week, you know, that another six days of, you know, the um the high holy day. But our people there, you know, they're in their folly. All right, today, this is my personal shit. Today I was out and about going um to do my day to day and it's Sunday. And um I seen all of shit, everybody I know for the most part, you know what I'm saying, packed up in them hoiler houses, all right. I see my mom's car at the hoiler house, I see my pop's car at the hoiler house. I'm like, man, they in there sealing their fate, you know what I mean? But anyway, you you seen what the um <clears throat> what Eve was doing, all right, teaching young Eve to be a promiscuous booty shaker like her, you know what I'm saying? This place got to be destroyed, all right? Got to be destroyed, okay? And that's why Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 16, starting at verse 2, all right, I'm going to start at verse 1. The word of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, came also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, and neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. For thus saith the Lord, concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. Verse 4, they shall die of grievous deaths. All right. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be mourned, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. All right. That's what's coming to the majority of the two thirds. All right. They were born in vain. All right. You know, and they got to be destroyed. One second, y'all. Okay. And, um, you know, I was watching the elders out of Dallas video yesterday. They was going over. Um, It was the Passover lesson. All right. And Elder Yasha Wamba was going into, you know, how, you know, they had some young men there, their sons. Well, and they were just going into how, you know, um, the offspring of the elect men, all right, should reverence and see their fathers as, as, you know what I'm saying, something special, all right? You you don't have a, if you're, if you are of the elect man's seed line, all right, you don't have just know anybody as a father, all right? You got one of, yeah, how about some outside day one as a father, all right? You know, so you got a standard you got to be held to, and you should want to be held to it, all right? You know what I mean? I got daughters, all right, from 14 all the way to my youngest being what? She'll be eight in a couple of months. No, she'll be seven in a couple of months. So from 14 all the way down to seven, all right, and they are, you know what I'm saying, young ladies and young girls, and you have to keep your eye on them, all right? You have to, all right? The scriptures say uh, keep a sure watch over, over your daughters, all right? If you're a man especially, all right, you're supposed to keep your foot on their motherfucking necks, all right? You know, and that's just the truth of the matter. All right. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I had to go release the beast on one of my daughters a couple of weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? For being a little, doing something she ain't had no business doing. All right. You know, and she saw daddy's angry side. All right. You know, she she had to, she had to see it. All right. So um, then what else we had? What else did I have in that video? Then we had the second clip. All right. Because if you don't do your daughters. Keep your keep your sure watch over them and keep your foot on their neck while they're young girls. You're going to have them grow up and be like the dude in the second clip, all right? You know, his daughter's 17 years old. You see how she dressed, all right? You seen the cum catches on her face. You seen the mouth and the, and the, and the shit talking she was giving to her father and shit, you know? You know what I'm saying? Man. All right, dude, uh, <laughs> he had to do all kind of shit to get that get that demon under control but he got it under control all right you know and only men can do that all right a woman you know what i'm saying if she was with her mother they would have been throwing blows all right you know they would have had a whole fight it didn't, it didn't have to go that far with her father all right it went further than it should have but he put the rebellion down all right the rebellion was put the fuck down all right let me see is it this one or is it seven Oh, yeah, Ecclesiastic 7. All right, and I had this post, verse 24. Has thou daughters? Have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. 
Marry thy daughter, and so thou shalt perform the way he met her, but give her to a man of understanding. All right, so that's the father's job, all right? You know, when the scripture tells you you're supposed to honor your father and your mother all the year, all your days, all right? But again, in this world we're in today, with these spirits on earth today, the majority of them are meant to be destroyed, all right? Because there is no respect in the household like that no more, all right? It's nothing but, you know, contentious angry bitter women all right because america is bitter america means bitter and that's the type of women that you got over here bitter angry ass women all right and again i use the word women loosely all right this is first timothy five all right we're gonna start at verse 11 they say but the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax one ton against hamashiach they will marry all right Verse 12, have a damnation because they have cast off their first faith, and with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also in busybodies, speaking things which they are not. I will therefore the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach, reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. All right, and that's the majority of our women. They didn't turn aside after Satan, all right? The Satan on this side being Esau. All right, the so-called white man, all right, he gave these women the liberty to get abroad and be reckless and, you know, the shit you see today. All right, this is Ecclesiastes 10. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein, all right? And Esau, you know, this is his kingdom. This is his world, Second Ezra 6 and 9. Esau... Is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it. They follow it, all right. And, and Eve, all right, Keisha, she has a place in Esau's world, all right. You know, and she loves it, all right. You know, man, if you if you told these women they didn't have access to the things that they have access to right now, you know, they would lose their fucking minds, and they gonna lose their fucking minds because the Lord is gonna take it away, all right. You know, whether they believe it or not, you know, what I'm saying the Lord is gonna take it away. Let's prove that also. All right, Isaiah 3. I'm going to start at uh, verse 16. It says, Moreover, the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, say it, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forward necks and wanton eyes, walking and missing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. All right, the definition of haughty is arrogant, proud, conceited, disdainful. You know what I'm saying all that right there. I'll show it to you right quick. Arrogantly superior and disdainful. And you can read some of these words right here as well. Proud, vain, arrogant, conceited. You know, superior, egotistical, superfilious, condescending, lofty. All right, so on and so forth. All right, and our women embody all those characteristics. All right, then it says they're wanton. All right, this is a sexually unrestrained woman. All right. Sexually unrestrained and having many casual sexual relationships typically used of a woman, they're whores. All right, Amos 7 and 17. You know, tell y'all about it. All right, let me see. Right here, behave in a sexually unrestrained way. Women who have wantoned with suitors. All right, so the Lord said, you know what I'm saying, the so called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American woman for the most part was going to embody that haughty spirit and that wanton spirit. All right, verse 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord Yahabashmah will shy will discover their secret parts. All right, and that's why the southern kingdom, for the most part, can't grow hair. All right, when these Negro, Hispanic, and Native American women, but again, for the most part, this is the southern kingdom hit with this curse the hardest. All right, when these uh, Negro women grow up and they get to get into that whole phase and shit, all right, they lose their hair. They ain't able to grow it no more. And it happens to some of them when they small girls, but for the most part, you know what I'm saying? The little daughters of Zion, when they little girls and shit, before they, you know what I'm saying, that box get hot, they have hair. All right? But then the Lord cursed them and take it away. All right? And this is how you know this talking about the Negro, Hispanic, and Native American women. Because who leads out of all nations women um, and wearing other people, other nations' hair? All right? These nations make more money off the Negro woman and, and the Hispanic and Native American woman buying their hair than any other nation of women. All right, and that's because it's the curse that's put on them. All right, verse 18. Just going to get into what the Lord is going to take away. In that day, 
the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cows and their round tires like the moon. So the Lord is going to start stripping you women. All right. In this day that we're coming into known as Jacob's trouble. All right. They say the chains and the bracelet and the mufflers, the bonnets. Who's the bonnet queen? Eva. Keisha. All right. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples. And the Christian pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. All right, you women going to be cutting up out here, all right? Because you ain't going to have access to your feminine hygiene products in the time we're coming into. Again, if you aren't with a man of the Lord, all right, you about to eat it bad out here. All right, bad. You ain't going to have none. You're going to be getting put to flight. You're going to be running from men, teeth, the beast. All right, you know, you if you can think of it, you're going to be terrified by it. All right, the Lord is going to plague this place with a judgment that's never that's not known to mankind. All right, it's never going to this is this is going to be the worst judgment ever known to, to mankind. All right, it's the best way to put it. And it's and it shall come to pass, I mean, that it's going to happen that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girl away rent, and instead of well said hair baldness, and instead of a stomach or a garden of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. All right. So if a woman is beauty, she, beautiful, she ain't going to look beautiful in that day. Verse 25. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. We read this earlier in 2nd Edge 16. All right. And her gates, meaning her leadership, shall lament and mourn. And she being desolate shall sit upon the ground because your, your man going to be dead. All right. The Lord going to kill him. All right. And you ain't going to have no leadership. You're going to be sitting on the ground pissing and moaning. All right. And you're going to have to uh, hope you have this number. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, said, we'll eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Shame, all right? How does a woman get her shame taken away? Through a man, through her husband. All right? You know what I'm saying? Through an elect man. Let me say it that way. Because these women got men now, but again, the Lord going to kill them. The only way a woman is going to get salvation is if she's with an elect Israelite man. And he takes her shame away. All right. You know. Verse 2. In that day shall the branch <clears throat> of the Lord, Yahweh, shall be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Key word being escaped. Because all of Jake ain't going to escape this. All right. Only the elect is going to escape. All right. Two out of three of the Negroes, Spanish, and Native Americans are going to die right here in America. And the majority of the two-thirds are women. All right, and children, but women, women outnumber men significantly on this side. All right, majority of these women over from Babylon the Great, they're gonna die. All right, all the heathen women that's in Babylon the Great gonna die, and two out of three of the Israelite women in Babylon the Great gonna die. All right, that's just how the Lord gonna do it. All right, so you know, this was just a um, you know, um, something I wanted to do, you know, the, um, the spirit was on me to do it. <clears throat> and I had the clips, and um, you know, I wanted to read the scriptures and put up something that was edifying. You know, Lord willing, it was that. All right, there's a lot more things that could be said, a lot more scriptures that could be read, but you know, I'm at 21 minutes up to this point, so that's good. All right, you know, any questions, comments, anything like that, y'all know what to do. Um, you know, if you want to add on to the lesson, you know, what I'm saying speaking to the brothers, you know, throw your log in the fire and put your scriptures on there, you know, and I. Uh, Light them up, you know, so that's that. All honor, glory, and praise go to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, teaching the course where I learn this truth. Peace and salutation to the Lord, select Kwame Asherala, and the Bible Ball, Shalom.